The sequence is a list of numbers in a fixed order. Sequences can be finite or infinite. A finite sequence has a definite starting value and a definite finishing value. On the other hand, an infinite sequence will continue indefinitely. A simple example of an infinite sequence with which we're all familiar is just that of the natural numbers. That is to say, the numbers that we count with. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Notice that I say etc, but I actually write a sequence of dashes or possibly dots. Those dashes tell me two things. They tell me that the sequence continues indefinitely, but they also suggest to me that by now I should have enough information to work out what the rule for generating the sequence is. A person coming along and seeing this sequence ought to be able to work out that the next value is 7, and then 8, and so on. In other words, we're just adding 1. 7, 8, and you can continue as far as you wish. We could make a simple finite sequence just given the numbers that we have here. We don't have to start at 1. Let's start at 3, for instance. An example of a finite sequence using natural numbers could be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice that here I don't add the dashes. The sequence terminates at 7. It's its last value. Of course, it would be terribly inconvenient if every time we wanted to use a sequence we had to write out lots of its members. It's much better if we could give it a name and somehow code the rule for the sequence into the name. Here's how we do it. Let's call our infinite sequence of natural numbers S. S has many members, so let's label S with a label I. It suggests that we might be talking about the ith member, or the member generated by the value I. We could now just describe our natural numbers as saying SI is equal to I, and state that I starts at 1 and continues on forever. We can, if we wish, use the infinity symbol to say forever, but we should remember that infinity is not a number. It's a symbol that denotes the idea of just continuing indefinitely. If we want to talk about our finite sequence in this way, it's very easy to adapt the notation. All we have to do is say i, si equals i, but now we start our i at 3 and finish at 7. Something else that's worth commenting on in this finite sequence is that although i equals 3, it actually gives the first term. The order in the sequence does not always correspond to the value of i. Let's look at a slightly more sophisticated example. Consider now the following values. 1, a quarter, a ninth, a sixteenth. Can you see what's happening here? We're taking squares of natural numbers and then taking the reciprocal. To describe this sequence, we could call it SI, such that the ith member is 1 over i squared, with i starting at 1 and continuing on forever. Sequences are not always quite so obvious. What about the following one? Negative 1, 3, 9, 17, 27. Now I put some dashes there to indicate that it continues, but actually not at all obvious to me just looking at those numbers, how they might have been generated. If someone told me that actually they were generated using a formula quadratic in I, then I would be able to find the formula. But it's far from obvious. In fact, you could check for yourself that I wrote these numbers down by choosing SI to be I squared plus I minus 3. Let's check one. For example, supposing we took i equals 3. 3 squared plus 3 minus 3, that comes to 9. Sure enough, that is our third term in the sequence. You can check some of the others as well if you like. Before finishing this short discussion of sequences, 
Let's look at one other kind of sequence. Sequence doesn't have to have a rule for generating it at all. The following. 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, etc. You might or might not recognize these numbers. They are, in fact, the digits from the value of pi, 3.14159, etc. Pi is an irrational number, and the digits that appear in its decimal places are completely random. There is no way of predicting this sequence with a formula. If there was a way of predicting it with a formula, that would actually mean that pi is not irrational. And that would not make sense. Pi is an irrational number. In practice, we will have very little use for such sequences. Our main use of sequences will be in the context of the study of series. That's the subject of another screencast.